I'm speaking with composer uh, Jay Ralph, uh, who made a splash with his score for Lucky Number Eleven, and has since be, uh, has becoming a prominent musical voice in the uh, documentary community. His latest score is Chasing Ice, which is a sobering documentary about uh, James Balog's quest to provide real photographic evidence of climate change. Uh, thanks so much for talking with me today. Yep. Uh, so, uh, before we talk about Chasing Ice, uh, I wanted to ask you, what made you want to become a film composer, and how did you uh, get into music? Well, I, I was always fascinated with, with sound and, and pictures. So, um, you know, I started playing guitar at a young age, and um, just, uh, you know, trying to figure out what landscape I wanted to be in, in terms of, you know, a lot of the people when I grew up wanted to be virtuoso guitar players, mm -hmm. you know, and speed and accuracy was prized. But, you know, I was kind of over there in the corner, um, messing around with distortion pedals and reverbs and different things and detuning the guitar. So I never had the, you know, the dexterity that they had, but I was kind of doing this other painterly thing about, you know, creating these soundscapes and different, you know, evocative uh, moods. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, and then I kind of started, you know, messing around with cameras, and I went to NYU. I thought I wanted to be a filmmaker, but the amount of discipline and time that it took to make those, you know, movies from script to screen, you know, you're talking years and years and years, it just was not kinetic enough for me, not, not you know, enough of a live wire by the time the movie's done your whole perspective on, on many things and, and opinions on things is so different. So it just seemed kind of, uh, you know, uh, a delayed gratification maybe or something. I don't know. And so uh, I ended up getting signed to Atlantic Records for a demo that I was working on and then, you know, just kind of ended up moving forward and kind of having always been interested in the moving image and, and helping distill the you know, vibe and, and story into music was always appealing. And uh, I was reading, you're, you're completely self-taught, right? You have no formal training? Yeah, no, I, 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 I mean, I really don't even know the, beyond the strings on the guitar or the, you know, the keys of the piano, I don't really know uh, the chords or, or uh, what any of the notes mean or the relationships between the notes. Or, you know, uh, I, I really have no understanding of a technical, um, you know, uh, e exactness of the music. But uh, from a, uh, a sonic, you know, soulful element, it's, that's kind of what I'm using as the, the guiding force. And when it just sounds and feels right, um, you know, uh, that, that's what's very uh, appealing to me. And, you know, and I'm very much... Uh, a, a reductive, you know, person in these things, and I, I'm focusing on the very, very, very minute differences uh, uh, and shifts in moving notes to the left and to the right, and changing velocities subtly, and um, you know, really examining the space in between the notes to really uh, find out where the, the tension and gratification is uh, in these compositions, and that, that's really what I'm focusing on you know, in terms of minimally reducing to the rawest essential core, you know, uh, the feeling. Mm -hmm. And you've done, I mean, you've done some amazing work in documentaries, uh, uh, such as The Cove, which I really loved, and uh, Chasing Ice, which I, I saw and, and was really uh, blown away by that as well. Um, how do you approach a documentary versus a, a fictional narrative? Are there any differences to you in terms of what the musical approach should be? No, not at all. I mean, you're you're creating themes, and uh, you're trying to further the story. Now, if you um, remember, you know, Man on Wire and The Cove and, and Chasing Ice and Helen Back Again, these are documentaries that function like huge action-adventure movies. They don't feel like you're, you know, what, what people would associate with a documentary. So the scores in these movies are being utilized and um, demanded upon to function 
uh, as it would in a feature score, in, 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 in helping to create a world that's bigger than what you're watching. Um, you know, so I feel that the, 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 the trilogy of those films, uh, Man on Wire and The Cove and Helen Back Again, are, are huge milestones in documentary filmmaking from the director's, uh, you know, visions because <clears throat> they further progressively with each film went, you know, changed documentary and, and added uh, a new experience. Like when you have Man on Wire, you have these three distinct sections. You have talking heads and you have reenactments and you have historical archival footage. Right. Now, the right. way that he had edited, edited everything together and worked on that, he almost made it so that the, the feeling and the three, the three sections, um, you know, were, were uh, indistinguishable. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, but, but you still have, like, a, a, you know, this recreation, you know, element to get some of the essence of what it was like to be there. And then comes along the cove, <clears throat> and the cove actually brings you to the front lines. And instead of recreating the drama, they actually bring you into the drama. And so that was another kind of milestone where, where it almost felt like, you know, you're watching a James Bond uh, heist movie again or something like that. Uh, you know, and then comes Helen Back Again, which dispenses with completely any sort of presence of the filmmaker or the talking head, and now you're completely entrenched in the front lines and in the story with the characters, and there's no reference to the filmmaker or the filmmaking. There's no awareness that you are watching a real, uh, you know, um, a, a actual uh, event, you know, especially because his understanding of cameras and photography was so um, extraordinary. And he, he's an award-winning photojournalist. This is uh, Dan Fung Dennis, the director. Now, you know, the, the technology and the, you know, application of the technology becomes so exponential that it, it really starts to feel like a real movie, but whatever that means, you know, like a, what we associate with um, <clears throat> an epic Hollywood that makes you feel bigger than where you are. You know, I mean, I guess that's the, the function of, of, a, of a good, you know, action adventure movie is to, to, to bring you on that adventure. Very hard to do in documentary or reality, uh, you know, based program. Right, and for for Chasing Ice, you have uh, James Balog's story, which is, I feel like the movie was very and the music was very personal for his story, and I, I felt like we were going on his his journey, you know, to try to capture all this. And was it hard to juggle his, you know, the center of the film was a focus with, was him, but also you were trying to get the general theme of climate change across, so where did you want the music to really focus on? I mean, you know, I'm just kind of always expanding and contracting the themes and the purpose of the movie and the purpose of the score to, to try to be completely united and, and symbiotic. And I feel that, you know, it was critical to make a theme for that, that, that was, you know, written and sounded, you know, hypnotic and propulsive, but then at the same time have an undercurrent of real threat and, and, and menace and, and, you know, impending, you know, uh, urgency in terms of, of, of uh, you know, the, the seriousness uh, of, of what's happening with, with the glaciers. Now, you know, it's very, you know, uh, interesting task, I suppose, to give personality and life to a massive block of ice. But... Um, that's the interesting thing about James, you know, uh, James's footage and, and Jeff's movie is that together they function almost like Mother Nature's security camera on time lapse. You don't see it 
uh, you know, you have to speed up the tape to find the burglar. You're not going to sit there and watch, you know, 200 hours of, uh, you know, uh, security footage. And so, you know, he's created almost like a earth security system in terms of uh, showing you the, the, the burglary of, of our natural resources. You know what I mean? Right, right. And uh, so do you, did you start working on the documentary in its rough stages, or did you not take a look at it until something started to, you know, take its final shape? I mean, they, you know, I start to see stuff in varying forms. You know, mostly I was interested in seeing, <clears throat> you know, the tone of the film, you know, the the quality of the images and, you know, what people are saying and 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 the pace. And this is what informs me. Mostly the images and the 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 you know, personality behind the subject. I'm trying to imbue into the story, into the musical story, some of their you know, uh, urgency and, and, and all of their, you know, sentiments and, and, and honesty. And, and, um, you know, that's, you know, I, I don't really have a process in terms of, you know, someone says ice and then it's piano or something like that. There's no literal linear equation because I don't even know or have a fundamental understanding of what I'm playing. It just seems natural. <clears throat> and, and you start there, you know, I start looking at the images and the colors of the images and then I start to, the fingers start to make patterns, and, and then I, I start to try to, you know, build upon that and then reduce upon that, you know, to, to, until it, it, it sounds like what it looks like. Right, right. And uh, did, did, working with Jeff, uh, did he give you any specific instru- instructions for what he wanted from the music, or, and how was it like working with him as a director? I mean, he's great. I mean, you know, that's one of the other main reasons I like to work with documentarians because they really, if these are like real, real filmmakers risking their life, risking their money, it's not studio filmmaking. It's not, um, you know, this, 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 is, this is real people's time, you know, uh, and, and, and risk. And so they really respect all of the participants that are involved in every facet of the process. And I think that, um, you know, I had worked with Paula on the Cove together, so she knows my work, and they were, they had appreciated what I've done on the other movies, and I think, you know, you know, I say, let me just, you know, take a path of what, how I think it should sound, and then let's, you know, we, we, we sit down and discuss, you know, before I do that, we sit down and discuss kind of what I'm thinking, what he's thinking, and then, you know, I said, let me just take an initial path, because you can never, you can never get back the first pass. The first pass is the initial reaction of whoever you're working with, whether it be an, you know, an actor's first take or a cinematographer. You know, the, the, once you start to become uh, one with the project, your perspective can and often does change from that initial gut reaction as to what it should be like. <clears throat> so there were different things throughout the period of working where Jeff, you know, uh, still felt it should be something different. And, you know, I'm happy to explore that with him, you know, because it's his movie. Mm-hmm. It's his vision. I am there to help him. If I want to make a record, I'll make a record. Uh, I'm very str- I feel very strong about what I write and what I do. It would be unfair of me to impose the absolute necessity to use the cue as it is written because... Um, you know, it just wouldn't be fair. That being said, I have a very strong opinion of how it should be. And so, you know, unless Jeff really feels very strongly about it and, and we have a good discussion, you know, I, I really don't like to, to change things. Um, you know, but I'm open to, to, to working on it in a very collaborative effort because it's never, you know, um, I, I, try, I, I often will try stuff and show them, you know, why I think, it should be the original way, you know what I mean? Right, right. Sometimes, you know, the music ends up going in there. Uh, that it's, not, it's another version of the cue or another cue that he asked me to write, and, and I don't like it. And then we get to the mix phase, and I'm like, can we throw this one up here again? I really want to show you now that you've lived with it. And there's a lot of times, you know, where, where nine out of ten times, the directors will be, you know, 
wow, I, I really see what you, I never saw it that way before, you know, and, and now, you know, because, you know, temp, temp scores are really bad in that regard, you know? Yeah, I know a lot of composers who <laughs> complain about temp scores. Um, and I think it's, but now right but it's now. also helpful because it, 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 it helps get everybody on the same page with a shorthand, and then you can kind of throw it out and ignore it and then, you know, go in, in, in a different way. At least I know, you know, what's been, what, they, what they've kind of like taken a, a, a look at. You know, it's just kind of like a, you know, it's like a, a, a restaurant menu. That's kind of what they usually do, and then here's their specials or something else that we're, you know, we'd like to try, yeah. you know, for, for you know, to, to, that's made specifically for today in this exact time and in this moment in, in time and place, you know? And now I, I think it's pretty crazy that in the documentary, James warns, you know, the audience and the people that he's speaking to that uh, uh, that hurricanes will be stronger, getting stronger and cause more damage. And now we just had uh, Sandy uh, happen. And I know you're from the New York area. Yeah. And uh, is I mean, is, yeah. is every, everyone OK back at home or is everyone, you know, OK? Yeah, no, I, I, I was very lucky. You know, you have to remember, New York was crippled. In that hurricane, shut down like a like a like a, a village in a in a remote like third world country. There was no electricity, no power, no hot water, no heat. And when you have an industrialized civilization that relies on those things, it almost doesn't know how to function without those things. You know, and 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 it, you know, when someone is used to not having any of those things, they figure out how to exist in those things. Yeah. There was times where I was having to run back to the apartment and almost have to make an exact, you know, list of things that I needed because the light was evaporating like you live in a cave and there's no, there's nothing you can do about it. It was, I mean, the, the images were, you know, startling and and it's crazy. That, I mean, it's exactly what the, in the film that and the topic and everything that was saying it's going to happen and it, it did happen and it's, I think, a real threat and, um, and Chasing Ice is a real, I think, sobering uh, a look at it so um yeah i mean it's a it's a real cautionary tale and it's it's a it's happening right now it's it, it, and the thing is just like the election with everybody with the hysteria of all the predict numbers and uh, uh, this poll and that poll and and and, and is it the is it the pre uh you know uh, uh polling numbers is it the actual data data is tricky like that mm -hmm. you know what i mean and you don't know which data you're looking at and how is it weighted and how is it you know which version of the data and of the section of the data you know when you have the pictures the, the the proof the security camera footage you know that's how i like to almost call his movie it's the it's the ultimate security camera footage for the for the for the earth reveals you know a shocking you know, truth of you, you don't have to rely on graphs and numbers. You Absolutely. can watch it with yourself and look at the, the, the magnitude of how it's eroded nine or ten feet in a hundred years and then ten or eleven feet in nine or ten years. So, you know, and you actually see it just being obliterated. So, you know, it's a little hard to refute that. Now, you know, I'm not going to speak to the science of the film or, you know, uh, to the, to the, how it relates to the rest of the, the scale of time, you know, but um, the facts in the film, you know, are pretty basic and pretty irrefutable for on that level. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. It's, I mean, it's right there and, uh, and it, it'll, you, you walk out of the film you know, realizing that it is happening. Um, so hopefully, you know, there's so many stubborn people out there that I, when I hear them talk, it just kind of <laughs> irritates me. So hopefully the, the documentary will get across to some people. Even, would... if, even if the naysayers, even if the naysayers don't agree with, with the thesis of the movie, you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Um, the footage is astounding. I mean, it's, 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 you're dealing with a world, world-class photographer and, and his understanding 
of photographing the the evaporating universe is it, you know <clears throat> it's 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 unreal and and it's really never before been seen but uh to to wrap things up i always love to ask composers um if you had the chance to to score any film ever made with no disrespect to the original composer which film would you choose I would choose Man on Wire and The Cove. <laughs> well, you accomplished those then. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I don't. I think everything that's being done, you know, is 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 the right one to do at, at that at that you know f- f- with that collaboration. You know, I I um, you know, I, it would be hard to imagine um, Indiana Jones or 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 Schindler's List, or Fargo, without the uh, original scores, or, I mean, they become characters of the film, so you're asking, I mean, it's, you know, the abstraction of that is, you know, why don't we just add other characters to the movie, because they become, you know, so synonymous with that, you know, but I can say in a different way, you know, it would be very interesting, and, and I would very much so like to work on something that has these grand things, uh, you know, and, um, you know, these, these grand images and stories that, you know, um, are not, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, nonfiction, but it, it, the, it, they're, they're very, so few and far between, you know, uh, you know, something epic like There Will Be Blood, um, you know, or, or, or something very personal like Buffalo 66, you know, uh, they're all, you know, I guess, you know, just, just, um, being fascinated with, with the whole, the whole process of, of how it worked and appreciating it. Right. But I, I mostly, you know, the, the, the real fun, you know, part of it, you know, for me also is writing the, the song, you know, for the movies <laughs> because, uh, you know, I'm able to distill into a three-minute or four-minute song, the encapsulation and the essence of the film, you know, uh, into a performance, a, a different type of performance. And, you know, Scarlett, you know, Scarlett Johansson sings the song uh, in a duet with Joshua Bell, the violinist, uh, for the end title song in the movie, and her performance is just earth-shatteringly haunting. I mean, it's, you know, she's a, she's a really a, 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 an incredible, incredible singer. And, and Josh is just, you know, a monumental talent. And, and his understanding of, of that instrument <clears throat> and his ability to control the exact phrasing and tone and fragility is, is like, you know, no other, you know. And uh, it was a real treat and an honor to be able to try and write something that took the themes of the film and the urgency and, um, you know, uh, 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 you know, authority of the, of the, of the glaciers. I mean, it's real, you know, it's a real, it's, 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 it grabs you by the neck and doesn't let go the footage mm-hmm. as well as, the, 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 the result of the footage and what's happening as a result of it, you know, what's behind the footage. It completely, you see the images <clears throat> and it, it's, it's like, uh, you know, literally takes you and, and won't let go. And I wanted to create something that enabled the audience at the last moment to completely be transfixed and absorbed by the imagery in this blanket uh, of 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 uh, you know lyric and tone and and create this meditation for people to really reflect and think about what this means to them and and try to write something that would help provoke uh, thought and discussion um, you know uh, to as a companion um, to the film. And I I really do think you succeeded. It it did did exactly that. It, it the images and the sound working together created this kind of a transient, you know, fixation for me as an audience member, just to reflect on it and, and absorb it. But, um, 
thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. I, I enjoyed well, the film, and uh, it was a great pleasure to talk to you today. Well, it's a, it's a pleasure to talk to you. I really appreciate you taking the time, and it's always a good thing when you're talking to someone who has the same name as an epic Bob Marley record. <laughs> Well, Mr. J. Ralph, uh, <laughs> thank you so much. And yeah, I know, <laughs> I know my name is yeah, very epic, but it's my theme song. I like to play it as my theme song when I enter rooms. So <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, Bob, Bob knew it was a good name. So I mean, you know, you're, you're already off uh, in, a, in a great position. Yeah.